So I'm going to go on fighting these people, and I, and I believe that I'm going to go on winning the battle for public opinion, not just in Britain, but right across Europe too. And I hope act as a bit of a warning uh, to you guys in the States as well uh, that this same phenomenon may well be starting to engulf you. Oh, it absolutely is. Two years ago, a uh, judicial watch, a public interest law firm, sued and got all this because they wouldn't release it through four years, but they finally did. And Bush in 2005 signed a treaty saying we're already part of an American union with this private corporate board running things, but our national media will not talk about it. It's kind of like uh, in 2007, the, the European Union celebrated 50 years, but I thought it wasn't founded till 2000. So you have this European Union by stealth through an economic agreement, and then now they admit it's a, un a, a union, and the same thing's happening here. But uh, you spoke about a huge awakening taking place. You spoke about the fact that if we just point out what illegitimate tyrants these people are, that they will fall. And you talk about people thanking you as if you can go out and do it alone. We have the moral high ground. We have the law on our side. We have history on our side. The problem is the bureaucracy has all the big banks and the big money uh, that, that want to set up their own private global corporate government uh, behind them. So, so speak specifically uh, uh, to the state of the world from your in-depth uh, position as a key member of the European Union Parliament from England and uh, tie that into Copenhagen and the open announcements by Al Gore, Gordon Brown, uh, Herman von Rupi and all of them openly saying this is world government through this environmentalist tyranny. Yeah, I mean, what they do, of course, and, and it's a well-established technique, um, they try and use any crisis. Now, whether it's a real crisis or whether it's a crisis of their invention, they use the crisis to extend the argument for uh, a, a, a loss of, of democracy, a loss of freedom of, of, of the individual, and the increase in global governance. And, and, and I can think of two very good examples of this. The first, of course, is the so-called war on terror. That, you know, we face a threat from al-Qaeda or whoever else it may be, um, and because of this, uh, we have to give the state more power over our lives. Um, and a lot of the judicial safeguards that we've enjoyed in Britain are now being thrown out of the window in the name of you know, the war on terror. And they're being used against non-terrorists. And they're being used, well, of course, I mean, this is what happens, isn't it? You know, this is what happens is that, they, is that once, once governments, once police forces, once they have these extra powers, uh, they, of course, then use them in any way that they see fit. And I'm afraid that the result of this now nine-year nearly war on terror um, is that our loss of individual freedoms um, right across the Western world is simply enormous. It's as if the terrorists have won uh, because our own politicians have, 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 have used this as an excuse to get more power. Similarly, the same phenomenon is happening with global warming. And I mean, Al Gore, I mean, you know, God help us. Um, <laughs> I mean, here's a, yeah. man, here's a man who who lost the presidential election, um, who has now gone on to make many millions himself. And this shouldn't be forgotten, you know. He's made many millions himself out of this, this, this scaremongering, frankly. Absolute scaremongering over whether CO2 emissions, as he says, are inexorably leading to temperatures going up. Um, now, of course, the fact that we know that temperatures have not gone up, they've actually now gone down since, since 1998 or 2002, depending where you set the bar. Um, is irrelevant. But it, so now they've it, changed it to, to weather changes, climate, I any change is unnatural. Well, that's right. And, and you know, they, they were hooked on global warming. They say global warming less now because it's cooling. But, you know, any time there's a hurricane, any time there's a flood, any time anything happens, we're told this is because of CO2 emissions. <clears throat> and we have the amazing situation with Copenhagen, where, you know, we may or may not be signing up to some new ridiculous deal over the next few weeks. And, I mean, we've just, I mean, just to give an example of how mad this is. We've just seen Britain's oldest steelworks up at a place called Middlesbrough in the northeast of England. That steelworks announced last week that it's closing down. In doing so, the parent company, an Indian firm called Tata, will be given £600 million worth of carbon credits, right, for closing down that, for closing down that plant. And then what will happen is all of that production will shift across to India, 
who, of course, have no intention of listening to any of this stuff. I mean, in, our, in, in the name, in the name of, of fighting against carbon emissions, we're actually literally exporting jobs from our country to, to countries like India, which clearly makes no sense at all. And we've got a situation where we're going to be signed up to treaties, which means that we can't change these agreements by how we vote at future elections. Now, the whole, the whole principle of democracy, at, you know, whatever level it's at... Or sovereignty. 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 I mean, sovereignty is all about not being dominated by some foreign offshore corporation, well, British East India uh, Company or Empire, but, but, but a member of parliament... Uh, a member of European Parliament, I, I want you to get into this key point here in just a moment. But I don't want to just run over the key fact you just laid out as we go to break here. You just pointed out not only are they paying them hundreds of thousands of pounds, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars, to shut a steel mill down in the U.K. and jobs. But when they go to India, there'll be zero emissions controls. So even if you believe carbon dioxide is this murderous, toxic waste, chemical weapon, even if you believe that fraud and polar bears can't swim and all the rest of it and penguins are drowning, the, you know, the, 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 the most incredible aquatic birds there are, the ice caps are getting bigger. Even if you believe all that, this will produce more CO2 under the UN's plan is what you're saying. Absolutely. And, and, and you know, the other big response in Europe to this is we are building tens of thousands of these ludicrous windmills, yeah, right across Europe, and we're told this is wonderful, this will be a wonderful source of renewable energy. Now, I'm not against the concept of renewable energy, but I'll tell you this. In Germany, they built 19,000 wind turbines, but not a single coal, oil, or gas-fired power station has closed down, because in the depth of winter, when a big, when a big anti-cyclone sits over northern Europe, not a single one of those 19,000 wind turbines moves around and produces any electricity. Even if cutting carbon emissions was vital to the environment, the way we're going about it is mad, bad and wrong. Well, it's uh, absolutely. We're going to break. We'll come back and finish the point I interrupted you on. But it's not a windmill's fine on your house. Because you don't have power loss down the lines. I have family that works in uh, different power uh, stations here in Texas. You lose tons of power down line. You have to have incredible power just to get it to places. The power is too low from windmills to let you transfer it and transport it. So you lose most of it. It's very wasteful. We'll be right back.